Now, Henry knew his history, and though he was emulating Edward III in his claim to France, his tactics were different. 14th century English armies had combined what was called the chevauchée, devastating raids across huge swathes of French territory with the taking of particular fortresses, which were then to be garrisoned and held as islands of strategic power. But Henry didn't want to do that. The idea of all of that being really to force the French into compromise, into negotiation. What Henry wanted to do was to take territory, to make good his claim by a systematic, relentless, and disciplined advance into Normandy, across land that could then be ruled and crucially taxed to support further advances deep into the heart of France itself. He would start with the port of Harfleur, a bridgehead that would hold the key to the invasion of Normandy in a way that the existing English possession of Calais, much further north, never could. Now, Henry succeeded in capturing Harfleur, but it took much longer and cost him far more than he'd anticipated. Dysentery took hold among his men during the long weeks of the siege, and by the time the port fell in late September, the force of fighting men that he still had left to him was down to under 10,000. And out of that 10,000, he had to leave 1,200 to garrison Harfleur, whose defences had been severely compromised by the English attack. But he didn't want to scurry back home uh, straight across the channel. That would hardly be the glorious statement of his rights and intentions that he'd planned. But on the other hand, he couldn't afford to do much more before winter set in. He needed to regroup and to return to England to prepare for a campaign of siege conquest proper. So the plan he settled on was this. A march from Harfleur to Calais to demonstrate his freedom of movement and his power in this French kingdom that he claimed as his, with the additional benefit that it would draw the French military response away from Harfleur, whose walls had in places been reduced to rubble by English guns and therefore would be difficult to hold by its new English garrison against a concerted French attack. So this march served a double purpose. But on this march, Henry and his much-reduced army encountered an obstacle in the form of the River Somme. The threat of massing French forces meant that he wasn't able to cross the river where he'd hoped at Blanchetac, and that in turn committed him to what turned into a total of 18 days of forced march before his tired and hungry men, an army of somewhere under 8,000 soldiers with archers, longbowmen, outnumbering the men-at-arms by something like five to one, before this, this tired and hungry force finally encountered the enemy at Azincourt. 